Hello and welcome to O Worm. Today we'll be looking at the anatomy of a starfish. The starfish is not a fish, nor is it a star. Many scientists would actually prefer you use the term sea star as to not offend the real fish. The stars still remain offended, but they can't say anything about it. They're too far away and don't have email. The sea star is actually an echinoderm, which is a phylum of marine invertebrates. Other members of this phylum include the sea cucumber, the weird cousin, the sand dollar, the successful cousin, and the sea urchin, who never shows up to Thanksgiving dinner. Sea stars don't have the same kind of symmetry we do. If you draw a line vertically down the middle of your body, you'll realize that one side is uglier than the other. That's bilateral symmetry. Sea stars have radial symmetry, which is symmetry around the central axis. Just picture how the slices from a whole pizza are identical. These five arms are called the radial arms, and this portion is called the central disc. Now, you may be surprised to learn that sea stars don't have eyes. That is because they do have eyes, just not where you might expect them. If you guessed on its face, congratulations, you are wrong. Sea stars don't have faces. Their eyes are on its arms, more specifically, at the tip of each arm. Imagine if your eyes were at your fingertips. That's what a starfish has to deal with every day. Here you can see this small white bump, which is called the madreporite. I'll keep you in suspense for what it does until later. You can also see that the skin is covered in spines for protection. Now I'm going to flip the sea star over. Here in the center, we have its mouth. You may notice that the mouth is very small, certainly smaller than many of the clams that sea stars like to eat. The sea star has a very creative way around that. And by that, I mean it throws up its stomach inside out to engulf its food, then sucks it back in when it's finished. Nature is wild and sometimes a bit graphic. But hey, I'm not judging. These grooves running down each arm are called ambulacural grooves. You can also see these tube feet. Sea stars have hundreds of these and they can use it to move around. Okay, now let's get into the internal anatomy. Remember that sea stars have radial symmetry. This is good news because it means we only have to dissect one arm, and you can pretend you saw the same thing happening for the four other arms. I'm going to choose an arm that's away from the madrep right there, so that one will do. Now I'm going to cut the tip, and I'm going to cut along its side. Use a scalpel to make sure that the internal organs stay in place when you remove the skin. You can see this is the internal skeleton which surrounds the sea star right under its skin. It provides the sea star with rigidity and protection. Now I'm going to cut around the central disc, being careful to avoid cutting the madreporite. Lift up the flap of skin and use the scalpel to dislodge it. Okay, so this structure here is the stomach. Fun reminder in case you forgot the sea stars throw up their stomach to eat. The stomach is connected to these structures in each of the sea star's radial arms, and these are the digestive glands. You can see that there's two in each arm. These things produce digestive enzymes and send it to the stomach, where the food is partially digested externally before the soup-like 
quote unquote chowder, is drawn back into the digestive glands, where the nutrients are absorbed. This allows much of the digestion to happen outside its body, so it can eat larger prey. That's a pretty big brain move, especially from an animal that doesn't have a brain. Now I'm going to remove the digestive system structures so we can see what's underneath. Here in each radial arm, below the digestive glands, are the reproductive organs. There's two in each radial arm, near the central disc. Sea stars have either male or female reproductive organs, but you can't tell because they look the same. I'm also going to remove these. Sea stars can also reproduce asexually through a remarkable regeneration ability. If you tear a sea star into five pieces, as long as each piece has a part of the central disc, you'll end up with five sea stars. Now let's discuss the water vascular system. This is a hydraulic system that moves the tube feet of the sea star. First, water is drawn in through the madreporite. Then, the water goes through the stone canal and enters the ring canal. From the ring canal, the water goes into the five radial canals in each arm. Then, it enters these little raised structures called the ampullae, which act as valves for the tube feet that it's connected to underneath. When the ampulla is closed, the water pressure causes the tube foot to extend, and when it is open, the pressure is released and the tube foot is withdrawn. This allows the sea star to move around using its tube feet. And that's about it! Sea stars don't have a circulatory or excretory system. Their anatomy is so basic, it's almost boring. Thanks for staying, lads. Here's a sea star fact to send you on your way. As you already know, sea stars exist to mock our laughable regenerative capabilities. However, we are still capable of causing them great harm. Taking them out of the water or throwing them can damage sea stars severely. Even touching them can lead to a possible slow death because human hands contain billions of bacteria. Sea stars were never meant for us. We haunt each other and our existence is a mutual burden. We must flee from them and hope that they also flee from us. So if you see a sea star on the beach, please leave it alone. Okay, I know I said sea star anatomy was boring, but I had to make sure all of it was boring. <laughs>